Good morning. As you can tell, blue skies. <laughs> I don't know why that made me laugh so much. It wasn't that funny. No, well, thanks. Thanks. Uh, complete contrast to yesterday when we came onto the Weaver. Today, against our better judgment, we're going all the way to the other end of the Navigable Weaver. No, well, as far as we can make it towards the other end of the Navigable Weaver. Depending on who you ask. If you ask Canal Plan, which is what we usually get our timings from, it's about eight hours. But according to the leaflet they gave us, it's five and a half hours. Mm. But so, that doesn't include lock transition time. Oh, that's true. Probably eight hours. <laughs> Could be eight hours including lock transition times. There are Four locks. two locks between us and the Anderton boat list, and then two more locks after that. So we've got a ways to go. And it's raining. And it's raining. And we're going against the flow, so we're going to be ever so slightly slower, although Observationally, I'd say this river's flowing backwards, so it might not be an issue. It's going that way. A uh, little bits of it are going that way. Bits of it are going the other way. Bits of it are going everywhere. <laughs> it's kind of confused. There's a rowing club just where we've moored, mm. and there's some rowers out this morning. The guy behind us has got his fire on. Have you noticed that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Smelled it this morning. It's August. George is doing lots of poos. Just a standard day, really. Um, I think it's his fifth. So it's time to get off, time to get moving. You're going to spend most of the day in the boat with George? I'm going to sit on the front as long much as I can because it's just nicer to be out. But um, if the rain gets heavy, I'll go in. Right. It's, I'll have the umbrella on the back oh, I, I, I have no rain gear. I know. I don't have rain gear. <clears throat> you have more rain gear than I've got. I've got <laughs> absorbed gear. I don't have any <laughs> waterproofy gear. I need waterproofy gear, but waterproofy gear is hard to find in my size in this country. <clears throat> so. Onwards, wetwards, forwards, that way. There's a little patch of grass next to the Runcorn Rowing Club that's just about big enough to throw a ball for George. He gets to use up a little of his excess energy before the long cruise ahead. Back under the imposing M56. In the last vlog, we made it to the northerly most point of the River Weaver navigation where it meets the Manchester Ship Canal. Originally, it would have flowed straight into the River Mersey there. Today, we're travelling to the other end of the navigation at Winsford. This is a journey of 19 miles through four locks and as far as you can take a narrowboat. The river itself actually continues upstream another 31 miles through Nantwich, Audlem and Wembury, all places we've previously travelled to on the Shropshire Union and Clangotham Canal. The source of the River Weaver is in West Cheshire near Peckforton Castle. This is the historic steamship that Daniel Adamson moored at Sutton Weaver. There are some hardy yet miserable looking fishermen sat on the moorings at Sutton Weaver. The rain has really started to come down now. George and I retreat indoors while Michael continues to heroically man the tiller. In 1720, an Act of Parliament authorised work to begin to make the River Weaver navigable for use by the salt trade. By 1732, work had been completed and initially there were 11 locks. The navigation wasn't actually profitable until about 40 years later. When the Trenton Mersey Canal reached Anderton in 1773, it initially reduced the salt trade on the Weaver. This recovered when crews started using chutes to get salt from the canal level down to boats on the River Weaver. There continued to be improvements on the navigation. By 1810 it was extended to Western Point by the Western Canal, which made it easier for boats to access the River Mersey. Between 1870 and 1900 there was a major reconstruction effort, with the original 11 locks being replaced by five much larger locks, capable of handling a thousand ton vessels. 
When the Manchester Ship Canal was opened, a new lock was constructed at Western Marsh, which gave ships direct access to this new canal. This is the Dutton Horse Bridge which carries the towpath over the Weir Stream. It was opened in 1910 and is one of the earliest surviving examples of a laminated timber structure. Hi! Beautiful day! The first lock of the day is Dutton Lock. The lockkeeper passes down a rope with a loop in the end. Michael attaches our centre line to the rope so the lockkeeper can retrieve it and secure our boat. This is Acton Swing Bridge. It was first opened in 1933 and carries the A49 trunk road. It's 274 feet long. I wonder how often it swings these days. This is the barge that was blocking the entrance to Saltersford Lock when we came downstream. We're not used to seeing traffic quite this large on the canal. And I also wonder how on earth they can see where they're going. Michael stayed well out of their way. All of the locks on the Weaver Navigation are paired. The larger of the two locks tends to have intermediate gates partway along its length. All of this allowed boats of many different sizes to transit the locks with minimal waste of water. We are now passing under Winnington Swing Bridge. Apparently it's the site of the Battle of Winnington Bridge which happened on the 19th of August 1659. 5,000 roundheads defeated a royalist army of 4,000 in a minor rebellion that followed the civil war after the death of Cromwell, or so Michael tells me. In some historians' mind it was the final conflict of the civil war. Currently there's a development of 1,800 new houses being built, so the second Battle of Winnington Bridge is being fought over whether the historical bridge will need to be replaced with a modern two-lane bridge. Opposite the junction for the boat lift is a large chemical works. Now owned by Tata, it was once the place where the first industrial synthesis of polythene was discovered. Another fact from Michael. There are a few boats waiting to use the lift as we pass. And a little further there are some visitor moorings. Apparently a lot of boats come down the lift, moor here for the night and then go straight back up. We are now passing through the town of Northwich, the use of witch in the name referring to the existence of a salt supply, like the towns of Droitwich, Middlewich and Nantwich. We travel under Northwich Town Swing Bridge and then pass Northwich Quay.
The next lock is Hunt's lock and as usual the gates are open and ready. Thankfully non-stop rain doesn't affect lock passage. These river locks are so much larger than the locks we're used to on canals. They fill pretty fast considering their size and the ascent is actually rather smooth. The last lock of the day is Vale Royal Lock and this time we're directed into the smaller of the two locks. The lock keepers had warned us that Newbridge Swing Bridge is very low, although they're confident we'll fit under it. We approached with caution and while it isn't very roomy we managed to fit under with no problem at all. Michael gets a nose full of fresh mint aroma after our little garden tickles the underside of the bridge. As we approach Winsford and the end of the navigation, the river is shrouded in trees and there are no visible clues that we're actually entering a town. This bridge marks the end of the canal and river trust section of the navigation and is a silver propeller location, but you can actually go a little bit further. There are a couple of moorings here at the Red Lion pub, but we decide to go round the corner to Winsford Marina. It may look like the navigation continues, but we've been warned by the lock keepers that these flashes are incredibly shallow, and although there's some private moorings ahead, you can't go any further. We find the basin empty, and so have our pick of moorings. Of course, with so much choice, we inadvertently moor on the water point. We're soaking wet and cold and tired. We've done 19 miles, and it's taken a little over five hours. That's our excuse for not filming our usual outro. Sorry about that. We hope you've enjoyed the vlog despite the water covered images. Thanks for watching, please give us a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and click the bell if you want to receive notifications. Oh, you're showing the brolly, that makes a change. You're not recording right now, so nobody's capturing how funny you are. He's just got his PP out. Well, that isn't information anybody needs, including me. We passed the historic scene. We passed the historic. We passed the his. Shut up. We passed the historic. This is the historic steamship. This that. La la la. This is the historic steamship. The. This is the historic sheep. <laughs> the rain has really started to come down now. I and George. When the Manchester Ship Canal opened, a new lock was constructed at Western Mu Western. This is Vale Royal Railway Yard. This is Vale Royal This is Vale Royal Rail Vale Royal Rail Railway Viaduct. <laughs> this is Vale Royal Railway Viaduct. Mm -hmm.